Welcome back, everybody. Yes, Sanwa Week continues. And in the hot seat today, we've got an insulation tester, digital insulation tester, HG561H. The HG561H is made in Taiwan. Calibration Assurance Certificate. Once again, these are tested at the Sanwa factory. Wherever that Sanwa factory is located, whether it's in Japan or not, um, every meter will leave with one of these certificates, just telling you that it has been calibrated and tested before it leaves the factory. As well, you get our standard HG561H user manual. And once again, in Japanese as well as English, always a good job from Sanwa in terms of the manual. Um, a nice, verbose, good pictures, graphics, everything you need to get started uh, with your test instrument. Another bonus with this meter in particular is the fact you get this pretty nice uh, little travel pouch as well. So uh, if you're out in the field, out and about, and you uh, want to have some extra protection for your meter, there you go. The meter itself is a really high quality grade um, material. This feels absolutely solid. Uh, top notch Sanwa quality shining through with this. Size wise, meter. you can tell it is definitely on the smaller side. Pretty well in touch with the uh, PM33A all around. Uh, yeah, nowhere near as big as your standard Sanwa size multimeters. Now, Sanwa says it does meet certain safety specifications and criteria. However, on the meter itself, uh, we have no third party uh, testing whatsoever, strictly that CE label, which honestly doesn't mean a whole lot in this day and age. Um, yeah. You have two test probes on the HG561H. You have your positive test probe, which actually you can remove. Yeah, look at that. And you can pretty well put it in any direction you want. When you find that spot, just clip it in and it is good to go as well as that native test lead it is a long test lead we're talking at least about oh five feet long so as well it has that really nice sort of crocodile clip uh very well made plastics here and it's a little hard to show you but it is really sharp uh very very nice and one of the nice things as well is you can actually remove that and you can put on another tip if you prefer um, if you have the proper connectors so you're not relegated to just using this crocodile clip for that lead. Same holds true for that positive probe as well. You can remove the uh, one that is permanently attached, take it out and put in your spare Sanwa test lead or whichever test lead you want. And here you go. You no longer have that uh, attached probe. You have a little bit more flexibility in terms of testing. And uh, yeah, it's kind of neat. So what I've done here with the uh, negative as well is I've uh, undone that alligator clip and I'm just attaching on a secondary probe and uh, we'll do a few measurements like this cool fit and finish is superb on this meter i have to say a solid well made device beautiful molded plastics uh, beautiful molding in general uh, very very nicely done this is a sort of a fish reel you could call it and that's just to wind your black negative test probe just because it is so long it's really long so they're giving you a lot of play here which is really really nice Taking a closer look on the far left, we have our test voltage selection hold button. Above that, we have our on off power switch. On the far right, we have our visual backlight indicator as well as the flashlight. And at the bottom, we have our multi-function selection for voltage, mega ohm, resistance, and continuity. In the middle, we have that big blue button. That is the test mega ohm button. You press the top of the button to generate a test of voltage uh, while the button is pressed. To make a continuous measurement, you leave the button up. To stop the measurement, release the button or lay it down again. The last reading on the display and the LED level meter will be held. Let's turn on the meter. Hold down on that power button. And yeah, you're greeted with a pretty gorgeous display, um, LCD, but a really nice backlight. If we hold down on that backlight button, you can see it is that nice sort of green. Uh, I really love that style of backlight. Very easy on the eyes and uh, it just works. We'll start things off today with a DC accuracy test. Here we go. The HG56 as well will auto recognize whether or not we're in AC or DC volts. Uh, let's start off a quick, DC accuracy, 2.5 volts is what we want to see, and 2.5 volts as you can see, DC. Take it up a notch, 5 volts, and 5 volts even. 
Next one, want to be looking at 10 volts. There we are, 10 volts even. Finally, 7.5 and 7.5 volts. So yeah, no worries about accuracy, but definitely that resolution, uh, yeah, leaves a little bit to be desired. There you just saw the auto power shut off. It does turn off automatically after 10 minutes. Right now we're in voltage mode and I'm just gonna increase the voltage a little bit. And you can tell that when we hit 30 volts, we get that nice high voltage alert visual as well as an audio just letting us know we're in the danger zone next up we'll try 120 volts ac and we have that alarm once again with that enunciator no worries there and in resistance mode 100 ohm precision lab resistor and nice and accurate continuity wise it is really slow it does work though Take note, when you activate that backlight, you're also activating the flashlight. Yeah, it's one and the same. You cannot disable one without the other, so uh, too bad. So instruments like this are primarily used as uh, digital insulation resistance testers. Uh, they're used to measure the insulation resistance of, let's say, electric lines or electric equipment. And for this one, it'll be in the range of CAT3 300 volt or CAT2 600 volt. Now, we're not going to go through every single range or feature on this little Sanwa, but I will uh, crank up the voltage on it and let's see if indeed we're getting that 500 volts that it is promising us. So right now, by default in voltage mode, it always starts at the lowest rating, in this case, 15 volts. Now, we want to increase that. So we and now we're selecting with the hold feature. And in this case, we're going to just go right for the gusto. Get right up to 500 volts to get started. Once you're ready, you lift the button it tells you that we are now in high voltage mode and when you're ready you simply pull. and away we go so alrighty little Samuel let's try that one more time open up the button five hundred sixty seven volts now you can basically test as long as you want when you're done release the button and the voltage goes down as well you have the option to just have a quick voltage test by pressing down on that button right now i'm set to 100 volts let's try it again and there we are 107.9 coming up on the sanwa 10 mega ohms that's our input impedance Already, that was fun. Now let's take a quick look on the inside. Here we are on the inside of that insulation tester, and you can see we have a nice threaded insert here. One Allen screw, actually, to get off the battery cover itself. Four AAA batteries is what powers this Sanwa. Let's go a little bit further. So nice attention to detail as well. You can see we have uh, some heat shrink on that uh, negative probe. Uh, and quite a nice size gauge wire as well. And look how that is just screwed in there. Uh, very, very nicely done as well. We have a twist tie to keep this from uh, getting too loose and I guess causing a problem when you're trying to untangle that uh, long negative test probe. Here we are on the main part of the PCB and you can tell we have a lot of those end channel MOSFETs. Yeah, they are everywhere. Wow, those are 27M2Cs. Uh, ST Micro is the fabricator. And yeah, once again, a lot of them, uh, a lot of diodes as well. And uh, we also have quite a few of these HC4, uh, I'm sorry, HCF4051Ys. These are analog multiplexers. One lonely PTC right at the top. Now I had to desolder one of these uh, battery leads just so I could open up the cover and give you guys a better view. But uh, once again, nice big solder blobs on that uh, battery housing. Uh, really nice attention to detail. At the top of the meter, we have our LED for the flashlight, and there is a big R's piezo speaker uh, giving us that nice audible alert. All right, gonna put it back together, come back with my closing thoughts. Sanwa HG561H is a pretty nifty little insulation tester from Sanwa. Sanwa has quite a few insulation testers in their range, but um, I gotta say this is one of the smallest they have and probably I'd say one of the most useful because it is so portable and so easy to take on the road. A lot of features on this little guy, including that test voltage selection mode, your LED level meter, which shows the mega ohms, the easy to read LCD, which has a nice fixed decibel point, And uh, let's not forget, it also has an automatic data hold function. That's very cool. 
Great Samuel build quality definitely shines through. This is one really well made insulation tester. The only caveat really is the expensive price of admission. This is going for between $150 and $250 US. So that make, might make it cost prohibitive for some people. However, if money's no object and you're looking for a really good insulation tester, look no further than the HG561H. It's one cool tool, the Sanwa. HG561H gets a solid 3.5 out of 5 stars. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Hey, Sanwa Week continues. Don't forget, if you saw that Sanwa logo pop up at some point during this review, let me know in the comments below. The first one that gets it right is automatically to enter to win a Sanwa multimeter. Till the next one, keep on testing.